Be a banker, be a lawyer, be a doctor. When you grow up in an Asian household, that's a lot of what you hear growing up. Given that these three fields are some of the most lucrative and popular, I thought that it'd be interesting to do some research on what your journey would look like in each of these fields and what your compensation would be. And so that's what we're gonna go through in this video today. To standardize across all three, I'm gonna be showing you your journey from the first year you graduate college to 15 years out around the age of 37. And because you need to take out loans for law school and med school, I'm also gonna be showing you how long it takes to pay down your loans. I thought it would be most interesting and fair to show the compensation for people who are at the top of these three professions. And of course, your compensation is totally gonna to differ depending on who you are, what school you went to, and what firm you joined, but hopefully this is an interesting comparison for you guys to see. For investment banking compensation, I'll be using my own experience from having worked at JP Morgan. For lawyer compensation, I've asked a friend who went from UPenn to Columbia Law School to Latham and Watkins. And for doctor compensation, I've asked a friend who went to USC for med school and Stanford for residency and is going to be a dermatologist. Last really quick things, make sure to stick to the end of the video if you wanna see a side-by-side -side comparison of the three. And also quick shout out to our sponsor Financial Edge for helping make this video possible. All right, first up is investment banking compensation. If you've been following this channel, you know I've made a video about this, so I'm gonna keep this section short and sweet. Coming out of college, you can expect to make around $145,000 to $185,000 as an analyst, $280,000 to $400,000 as an associate, $525,000 to $650,000 as a vice president, $775,000 to $875,000 as an executive director, and around $1.1 million to $1.4 million for your first three years as a managing director. For these figures, note that your bonus increasingly becomes a larger part of compensation, and that's pretty normal in banking because managing directors are paid more depending on the deals they can bring in. And rumor was that the most senior MD back in my group at JP Morgan was making around five to $7 million a year. Another thing I would add is that bonuses are super variable depending on performance. So these compensation figures can generally increase or decrease by about 25%. Compensation figures are obviously a huge draw for investment banking and especially because you don't have to take out any loans. And if you're interested in recruiting for the field, be sure to check out Financial Edge. The company's founder, Alistar, is literally the instructor who taught me and hundreds of other analysts during my summer training at JP Morgan. And he's this British guy who has a really great, good-natured personality and cares a lot about being a good teacher. Financial Edge has a course called The Investment Banker, and I highly recommend it because it's the best product out there and it's something I wish I had back in college. Their instructors train the analysts at the top four banks who pay tens of thousands of dollars, if not more, and you can get the same lessons and work at your own pace for just a few hundred dollars, so I really think it's worth it. You'll learn everything that I learned during my training, including accounting, valuation, DCFs, and LBOs, and they also have other courses about asset management, accounting, and a lot more. If you're interested, be sure to use my code RARELIQUID25 to get 25% off, and I'll leave a link to it down in my description below. All right, next up, let's look at lawyer compensation. These next two sections are gonna look a little bit different because to become a lawyer or doctor, you need to go to grad school and usually this entails taking out loans. As a result, I'm not gonna only be showing you guys compensation, I'm also gonna be showing you your journey of paying those loans off. As a friendly reminder, I'm basing this section off of a friend who went from UPenn undergrad to Columbia Law, which is a top five law program, and then to Latham and Watkins, which is a top five law firm. All right, with that said, let's take a look at the lawyer career journey and compensation. It's customary to work one to two years as a paralegal while preparing for law school applications and studying for the LSAT. And during this time, you make something around 60 to $65,000. While at law school, you typically don't work during school because you have so much to study for, but you usually do make some money during summer internships and make around $14,000 your first summer at a smaller firm or with the government and $39,000 in your second summer at a big law firm. After law school, at least for the first four to five years, compensation is pretty standard across the board and you can expect to make $217,000 in your first year. Unlike in banking, your bonus isn't affected by performance and linearly increases year by year. And if you start your own practice or something, then you can make a whole lot more. But after 10 years of working at around age 37, you can expect to make around $477,000. Of course, you do have to pay for law school. So let's take a look to see how long it takes to pay your loans off. First, we'll need to calculate how much cash you have available to pay down debt each year, so let me walk you through my assumptions. I assume that once you start working after law school, you spend around $2,500 in rent, $1,000 saving money, $1,000 on food and entertainment, $500 for a car, and $500 for other expenses each month, which totals to $5,500 monthly spend and $66,000 a year. 
I assume that as your income grows, you spend 10% more each year. And as a simplifying assumption, I'll be using a 40% tax rate as if you were practicing law in California. I then assume $75,000 in loans taken out each year and a 3.5% interest rate for half of that and 6.5% for the other half with a required $1,500 monthly pay down for the 3.5% loan once you start paying them off. So let's take a look and see what this results in. For each year in law school, you'll be adding $37,500 for each loan, which results in $225,000 in loan principal by the end of school. While there are some loans that don't bear interest right away, most loans do. And so while you're in school, your loans actually increase due to interest. And so with 3.5% and 6.5% interest rates, we're looking at a total of $240,625 in principal plus interest at the end of law school. From here, bringing back our compensation figures and after monthly expenses and taxes, these amounts are how much cash you have available to pay down your debt. Now I know there are a lot of numbers here, but all of this is really simple. This first section is how much debt plus interest you have left after paying down debt. This second section is how much you're paying down for each loan each year. And this third section is how much total interest has accrued. The main takeaway from all this is that if you're super aggressive with paying down your loans, it'll take you about four years to be debt free around the age of 31. In total, you'll have paid off $225,000 in principal and $30,688 in interest, which gets us to $255,688 in total debt and interest paid off. Just to summarize and looking at everything more holistically, you can pause to see here how much money you'd make throughout your lawyer journey, how much cash you'd have available to pay down debt, and how much you'd have to pay each month until your loans are paid off. Next up, let's move to the doctor's journey and compensation. As a friendly reminder for this section, I'm basing the information from a friend who went to USC for med school, Stanford for residency, and is specializing in dermatology, which is one of the higher paying specialties. Just as we did with the lawyer section, let's take a look at career journey and compensation. It's typical to spend one year after undergrad working at a research type role where you earn something like $15 an hour as you prepare your med school apps and study for the MCAT. You then spend four years in med school with many taking one additional year for research to strengthen your residency applications. Residency is where you're finally a doctor but you're not being paid like one. You're working at a hospital and seeing patients but you're really there to learn about your specialization and you work five to six days a week and are being paid around 60 to $70,000. Then finally 11 years after graduating from undergrad you finally become an attending and see a huge salary bump which then linearly increases over time. I've assumed just a 2% increase per year. Just like law, you can make a lot more if you start your own practice and it also really depends on your specialty. Next up, let's take a look to see how long it would take you to pay off your loans and just a fair warning, if you want to be a doctor, you might wanna skip this section. First, going through the assumptions, I assume a bit more spending than lawyers since you get paid more once you're in attending and so I assume $3,000 in rent, $2,000 in savings, $1,000 in food and entertainment, $1,000 in other, and $700 on a car for monthly expenses of $7,700, which annually comes out to $92,400. I also assume you spend 10% more each year, a 42% tax rate based in California, and that you take out $75,000 in loans for each year in med school with a 3.5% and 6.5% interest rate, and a required $1,500 monthly pay down for loan one. Starting off with total principal added, our doctor is taking out $75,000 in loans per year for four years until $300,000 in principal is taken out. Unfortunately, most loans start to bear interest right away and so things really start to add up since you can't really pay off debt until you become an attending and as a result, your loans have ballooned from $300,000 to $415,280. Assuming you start aggressively paying off your loans with all the cash you have after expenses and taxes, we see that it takes five years for you to become debt free at age 37. In total, this would have resulted in $300,000 in principal paid and $139,263 in interest. So you can see you're really hurt by the interest much more as a doctor than a lawyer because you take out more and can't pay off loans for a while unless you have a sugar daddy or sugar mama. To provide you with a more holistic picture, here's how much you would make throughout your career journey to become a doctor, how much cash you'd have to pay down for debt each year, and how much you'd pay each month until your loans were completely paid off. All right, last up, let's look at a side-by-side -side comparison. For this section, you can simply pause and just take a look at the numbers as I thought it'd be helpful for you to compare. Obviously working in finance is a lot more lucrative, but I would say most people don't end up working in banking from analyst to managing director and instead move onto the buy side or industry jobs while lawyers and doctors tend to practice for the rest of their lives. 
I would love to say here that in finance, your hours are a whole lot worse and that's why you get paid more. But honestly, after speaking with my friends in law and medicine, your hours don't really seem that much better, especially considering that your hours get better as you progress in your career in all three fields. So at around age 27 or 28, you'll be working similar hours across all of these three professions. With all this said, I think the most important takeaway I took from my own experience from working in banking and from speaking with my friends in law and medicine is that you have to enter into any of these fields for the right reasons. For investment banking, the analyst hours in particular are pretty rough and if you'd like to learn more about the day in the life of a banker, you can check out this video right here. For law, there's a sizable amount of debt you take on and you're not going to really be working with numbers, you're going to be reading a ton. And so if that sounds like that's something of interest to you, then maybe law is the correct path for you. And for doctors, 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 I would say you really have to make sure you love science or you love working with patients because those loans and interests are absolutely no joke. With that said, I would consider the doctor route to have the most purpose and meaning for the average doctor versus the average banker and lawyer. And so that's a huge consideration. Of course, you know, I think money's not everything. And so if you really are passionate about being a doctor and want to practice medicine, I'd say go for it. Now that I think about it and after I've done all this analysis, I kind of feel like being a banker is like being that spoiled youngest child. The lawyer is kind of that unloved middle child and the doctor is the one who's the oldest and has to be super, super responsible. Not trying to throw shade at any of these professions, I think to each their own and it really depends on what you really enjoy and find important. Each of these careers obviously can come with a lot of success and meaning. And if you'd like me to compare against any other fields or industries, let me know down in the comments below. Regardless of whatever career you enter into, it's always important to manage your money well and invest. And so if you'd like to get access to my full stock and crypto portfolio and get access to my buy sell alerts whenever I make a trade, feel free to check out my Patreon down in the description below. I also have a free daily newsletter that covers stock, crypto, and macroeconomic news. So check that out as well if you're interested. And lastly, just wanted to give a final reminder to check out Financial Edge if you're interested in recruiting for banking. If you'd like to learn more about the day in the life of an investment banker, then feel free to check out that video. It should show up in the next screen. And with that said, thank you so much as always for watching. Hope to catch you in the next video. Thanks and peace out.